NBA 2K22 has every single all-time team with a lot of players that are legendary, but every single all-time team is missing one player that has to be on the team that either 2K doesn't have the rights to, or they are just hoeing the player in general. So I'm going to cover that in today's video. If you like this kind of content, please join the pack and subscribe, and let's get the video started. With the Philadelphia 76ers, it's obviously Charles Barkley, but I'm not going to say Charles Barkley for this because he's going to be for another team. So ignoring Charles Barkley, I'm going to say Chet Walker. Joe Walker had seven seasons with the Philadelphia 76ers. He had 16 points per game in that career, and he had an NBA championship. He was a great player. I mean, compared to the person last place here, which is Ben Simmons, who has done nothing for the 76ers, no offense to Ben Simmons, it just doesn't compare. It just doesn't compare. Chet Walker won an NBA championship being one of the better players, while Ben Simmons couldn't even make conference finals and doesn't even play, so no. So for the Milwaukee Bucks, this one was kind of hard. Paul Pressey was a great player, but I think Drew Holiday deserves it more. I know Drew Holiday's only played two seasons, but in those two seasons, he's averaged 18 points per game while being one of the best defenders in the NBA. And he's an NBA champion with this team and maybe is going to be a two-time NBA champion for this team. I think if Chris Middleton is on this team, like easy, then I think Drew Holiday should be in the back of this team at least. Now for the Bulls, Luau Deng. Captain Kirk absolutely deserves to be here, but over Luau Deng, who had 10 NBA seasons with the Bulls, averaged 16 points in those seasons and was an all defensive player. Kirk Heinrich has a time just like Luau Deng, but Luau Deng played better. So simple as that. For the Cleveland Cavaliers, Ron Harper. I'm really surprised Ron Harper isn't here. He led the team to a playoff appearance multiple times. He had four seasons with them. He averaged 19 points in those seasons. He was an all-star. I don't see how Ron Harper isn't on this team. I know it's hard to put him over Anderson Verja, who is beloved by Cavs fans, but still. So for the Celtics, this one's kind of hard. You could say Antoine Walker maybe over Ray Allen, but that's hard because Ray Allen was the third option on the championship team. He had a great couple years. But Antoine Walker did have eight seasons with them, was a multiple all-star, had 21 points per game on nine rebounds, was the better player over Paul Pierce when they were teammates. I don't know, that, that one's pretty hard. You could argue either Antoine Walker or Ray Allen there. For the Clippers, I think easy, Randy Smith. Randy Smith had nine seasons with Buffalo and also the Clippers. He had 18 points per game. He was an all-star MVP for the team. I mean, compared to Lamar Odom and JJ Redick, it's not even a debate that Randy Smith deserves it more. For the Grizzlies, easily Pau Gasol. They lost the rights to Pau Gasol. He was a rookie of the year on the Grizzlies. He had seven seasons with the Grizzlies, added 19 points per game on nine rebounds. I'm not saying he should be above his brother, but he should be damn close. So for a Hawks player that I had never heard of, but doing some research, I think he deserves it. Over Tree Rollins, I think it should be Dan Roundfield. He had six seasons with the Hawks. He had 18 points per game, 11 rebounds per game, three blocks a game, and he was a three-time All-Star, all with his tenure with the Hawks. Compared to Tree Rollins, I don't think there's really a debate here. With Tree Rollins' best season was like nine points per game. It's not a debate here. For the Heat, this one's really hard. I'd say over Hassan Whiteside, who had a couple seasons with Miami, it was pretty good with Miami. You could say maybe Tyler Hero. This one's hard. Uh, Tyler Hero had three seasons so far with the Heat. 17 points per game, a sixth man of the year. He is the second leading scorer on a good championship level team. While Hassan Whiteside was just a good player on bad Heat teams that would barely make the playoffs. So trying to compare them is kind of hard. I'd say Tyler Hero is in the conversation with Hassan Whiteside. For the Hornets, I mean, David Wesley shouldn't be here. And I know LaMelo Ball's only played two seasons, but LaMelo Ball. I mean, in those two seasons, he's averaging 18 points per game, seven assists, rookie of the year, seven rebounds, compared to David Wesley, who was what, getting like 14 or 16 one season? Yeah, I know. LaMelo Ball deserves it more. Now with the Jazz, this one's hard, either in between Jeff Hornacek or Mehmet Okur. So Mehmet Okur was an all-star. He had uh, seven seasons with the Jazz, 15 points, eight rebounds. It's close, I'm not saying for sure, but maybe Mehmet Okur over Jeff Hornacek. For the Kings, it's easily Jack Twyman over Doug Christie. Jack Twyman had 11 seasons with the Kings. He had 19 points per game and he had two all NBAs. Easy, if you've been watching my like little series of like restarting the NBA, you know Jack Twyman was a demon. For the Knicks, Bill Bradley. I'm surprised they don't have him already. I think they lost the rights to him. Over Charles Oakley, Bill Bradley had 10 seasons with the Knicks, 12 points per game, one all-star appearance, a two-time NBA champion. He was a third or even fourth option on both those championship teams. So Bill Bradley has to be here over Oakley. With the Lakers, we're gonna say Pau Gasol again. 
uh, seven seasons with the Lakers, 18 points per game, 10 rebounds with the Lakers, two NBA champions as the second option, and a six-time All-Star. I know Byron Scott and Michael Cooper were fantastic as well, but statistically over Pau Gasol, nah. This one's hard. Maybe over Darrell Armstrong and Jameer Nelson. I'm saying maybe Evan Fournier. He had seven seasons, 16 points per game. Compared to these two, it's, it's a close one. For the Mavericks, I'm actually going to say this 100% seriously. Over Sean Bradley, I think it should be Jalen Brunson. I know this may be an overreaction for some of you, but for set for four seasons with the Mavericks, 12 points per game, and being the second option right now on a good team, I'm not afraid to put Jalen Brunson above Sean Bradley here. I know Sean Bradley had a long time with the Mavericks, but I don't know. I feel like Brunson has done more. For the Nets, debatably over Keith Van Horn or Otis Birdsong, I'm going to say Rick Barry. He only played two seasons with the Nets, but he averaged 32 points per game with the Nets. And he had two all-star appearances. Kind of a no debate. I mean, the dude was a demon. Even if it was just two seasons, I mean, he was damn good with the Nets. For the Nuggets, I'm going to say Ralph Simpson over Jamal Murray and Marcus Camby. Because Ralph Simpson had seven seasons, 20 points per game, and three all-ABA Compared to these two who have never even had an all NBA or, or 20 point per game season, it's kind of hard to, to do that. For the Indiana Pacers, there's no debate that Reggie Miller, who is the greatest Pacer of all time, needs to be here. 18 seasons with the Pacers, bro. 18 points per game, 40% from three when people aren't even shooting like that. Yeah, it's easy all time Pacer here. For the Pelicans, I'm going to say even after one season, I truly believe this. Over Trevor Ariza, you could put Valanchunas, or you could put CJ McCollum, and CJ McCollum hasn't even played a whole season. I don't care. They've already done so much more for the Pelicans than, he, than these two have that maybe not Eric Gordon, but Trevor Ariza for sure. So for the Pistons, I'm going to say George Yardley. This is a guy from the 50s. Six seasons with the Pistons. He had 19 points per game, nine rebounds. He was the scoring champion. And he was the first player the Pistons ever drafted. I'm going to say over Kelly because Yardley was a pretty damn good player for a long time with the Pistons. So for the Raptors, I'm going to say nobody. Nobody deserves it over Ibaka. Uh, the Raptors are a pretty new team, so it's kind of hard. But I just maybe OG and Anobi, but I don't think so. And for the Rockets, no one. I was thinking maybe Vernon Maxwell could be replaced with someone. But Vernon Maxwell was a second option on a championship team. So you can't replace him. So for the Spurs... We're not going to replace Avery Johnson, but we're replacing Johnny Moore. I think the Avery Johnson rating is wrong. But Johnny Moore over Mike Mitchell, who had seven seasons with the Spurs, 20 points per game, 50% from the field, and was a number two option next to George Gervin. I don't know. I think, I think that's an easy place in Spurs history and way better than Johnny Moore. For the Suns, quickly, Charles Barkley, easily. Four seasons only with the Suns, but 23 points per game. 12 rebounds per game, an MVP, and made the finals easy. Easily gets in here. The Supersonics slash the Thunder. The only person I said maybe was Tom Chambers, and you could maybe put it over Shrimp or McDaniels, but it's hard. It's close. Uh, five seasons, 20 points per game, seven rebounds, and an all-star MVP. I mean, these two are also great, so it's hard, but maybe Tom Chambers. So for the Timberwolves, I think Anthony Edwards over either Wiggins or Sprewell. It's a debate, but Anthony Edwards did make a playoffs. Two seasons, 20 points per game. It's hard because Wiggins is also great. So that, this one's kind of a debatable one. But I think Anthony Edwards, maybe not now, but in a season or two, is going to be here. For the Blazers, it's Brandon Roy. I won't tell you the stats because Brandon Roy, you already know about him. And he should have been here in the first place. It's just that they lost the rights to him. He used to be on the team. They lost the rights to him. But we all know he should be on this team as like a top five player, probably. For the Warriors, I'm going to say Neil Johnston. And that's going to be over Iguodala. Now, before you get upset, I know Iguodala is a finals MVP for the Warriors and is a longtime player for them now but neil johnston would have also been a finals mvp if they had finals mvp votes at the time he's an nba champion for the warriors he had eight seasons 19 points per game 11 rebounds three-time nba scoring champion iguodala wasn't doing that for the warriors so i'm gonna say neil johnston probably deserves it more and finally for the wizards they used to have the rights to him but walt balami five NBA seasons with the Wizards, 28 points per game, 17 rebounds, four-time All-Star, easily would get into the Wizards over Jeff Malone easily. Okay, that's it. Did I miss anybody? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like the channel, please give it a sub and I'll see you guys next time.